Welcome back, guys, to Phoenix Wright Spirit of Justice, where last episode our trial began, and of course, our trials here in Kulain begin with Rafer's insights being displayed at the divination seance. Now we look to pick a hole in it, find some contradictions, as we wonder exactly how well I can kind of navigate these waters of memories of the dead. We won't check if we can, well, we won't check just in case. I think we're okay. We're going to go forward with this. So let's find out what happens next. Nah, I remember how it works. Uh, I remember how it works. I just don't really know how it, how it works. Still, the sensations this time seem to fluctuate more than the ones from Albie's trial. In which case, I'd better keep an eye on changes in their intensity too. Okay, time to point out the sensations that contradict the insights. So, intensity matters as well, to a large degree in this. The victim commenced the purification right by bowing to the lanterns and reading a sutra. Just looking for the sensation a moment. The first part of the transformation right ended, he lowered the sutra suddenly. He heard the accused approaching for the steps and smelled at incense-laden robes. This, that's built around sensations. Okay, wind. Incense footsteps, incense, incense, it's close to pain. I'm not sure I see anything wrong. So it's going to replay, is it? You hear the accused approaching footsteps and smelled it incense laden robes. Well, that's true. That happened. It was then the victim felt an intense pain. I believe this was when he was stabbed. As his life's blood spilled over, his vision dimmed till finally he passed from our world. Okay. Well, it's going to be within the last two segments of this stuff at the moment. Hmm. You heard the accused approaching for steps and smelled her incense laden robe. Seems to be a key sentence in this testimony, at the very least. And no matter what, we'll be looking for the latter part of it. I don't know what's so contradictory. Oh, okay. No, I get you now. Okay, it took a little bit. Took a little bit of watching repeatedly, but it's the... If we go back to the last kind of frames of stuff again... It's the fact that the incense, while the smell, while the enemy gets closer, while Lady Kira gets closer, the footsteps themselves are not growing in any way, shape, or form. So that's our thing here, by the look of it. So are we looking somewhere along this? Uh, but what statement am I presenting this to? So this is like the thing that's not making much sense. All right. <laughs> we knew this was going to be a bit more intense in how to figure it out. So, the only statement that mentions footsteps is the third statement. So, of course, it was the one full of all the talking points, really. So, is that what I'm presenting? Let's give it a shot. Right, so what we're presenting is the fact that the footstep sound doesn't get any louder. Objection! Is that right? Because that's what the intensity would be representing. The victim supposedly heard the accused approaching footsteps, but did he really? What nonsense is this? Is it not abundantly clear? No, it's not. No, it really isn't. Because there is something strange about those footsteps. S strange? Explain yourself, barbed head. The footsteps are strange because they don't get louder. Again, the intensity would increase as Lady Keeler got closer. Same with the incense. They're not getting any louder. And why exactly does that matter? Please focus your attention on the incense the victim smelled. The scent grows stronger as the accused approaches. If the accused really had approached the victim, the sound of her footsteps would have grown louder as the scent of incense grew stronger. Ah! 
why? That makes perfect sense. How can this be explained, Your Benevolence? Um, well, there must be a reason. Objection. It is as they say. Even a putrid worm of a lawyer will turn. What does that even mean? He's not exactly singing your praises, that's for sure. Still, we cannot discount this information solely on account of its loyally source. Your benevolence? Perhaps you must listen more carefully to the abbot's mitama. Listen more carefully? What's he talking about? Hmm, yes, he would appear so. I shall try to refine the sensation. R refine the sensation? I can more accurately gauge sensations by deepening my communication with a Mitama. I... I didn't know you could do that. Why have we never done this before? By refining a sensation, a clearer picture of the truth can be discovered. Oh, blessed Mitama, I beseech you, hear me now and respond to my call. Wait, it wasn't footsteps at all? Footsteps change into bells? What could this mean? Also, doesn't this prove that divination seances are completely bull because it can get things completely and utterly wrong in terms of sound? No, the judge wouldn't be that makes sense, would he? Bells? But the only bells at the scene of the crime were... on him. Ah, oh, that jingling must have come from Abbot Inmi's bells! You mean those big things he had on his ankles? Well, there you have it. The sound of bells was from the high priest's own footsteps. Th then that means... The footsteps wouldn't get louder. If the footsteps belonged to the victim himself, it means it was the victim who was moving, not the accused. The victim was the one who went running toward the broken lantern from the spring. A far cry from what her benevolence's insight would have us believe. Huh. In the Sanctum diagram has now been updated in the court record. But why would the victim have approached the accused? Maybe he was trying to defend himself. Please explain. He could have felt threatened by Lady Kira standing there with a dagger. If so, he might have fought to overpower her before she attacked. Steal your voices! It's nothing but a theory and a poor one at that! Be not led astray by this lawyer's obvious postulation! Oh? While his insolence is inexcusable, I would ask that you calm yourself, your benevolence. Is there something you would care to say, Prosecutor Sadmari? Even if it was Abbot Inmi who moved, it does not negate the accused crime. What do you mean? The accused was likely waiting for the High Priest to approach. Ah! And as he neared, she plunged the dagger into him. It is as simple as that. Oh, right. It really doesn't change much, does it? <laughs> no. Yes, it is as the prosecutor has said. In fact, it is as I meant to say all along as well. Right, and that's why you were so shocked when you first heard it. Understand now, lawyer. That contradiction you conjured up has come to naught. Once I own my insights, it will vanish like the dying rays of the sun. The insight has been revised. The victim commenced the purification has now been changed to... He rushed the accused. Oh, no, it was actually the thing about the footsteps has been changed. So he rushed the accused and tried to fight her off by the broken lantern. As his lifeblood spilled over, his vision dimmed to finally pass my world. So it's the fourth statement that's been changed, is it? See, the fact that it was Abbot in me who moved changes nothing. Uh, come on, Phoenix, you got to keep your cool. That contradiction I pointed out must mean something. That one sensation changed after Princess Rafer refined her vision. It stands to reason that something else might have changed too because of the refinement. I should focus on any sensations that have changed, while searching for more contradictions between them and her insights. 
Well, no matter what, in terms of the animation side of things, we're probably always going to be looking at the end two things when the sensations appear. Now, let's go find out which statement has changed. So it's the first statement that's changed, not the fourth one. So it's going to be probably something involving this, considering this has totally changed. Everything else is the same? Yep. I have to pause this soon, don't I? Alright, incense, bells, water! Uh, well, it's going to be that, because that means he wasn't going... I... Doesn't that change the direction completely? I mean, that's just weird. Why is that sensation suddenly appeared? I need to wind this back a little bit here. So I need to get it exactly on the, the water bit. So this would contradict with that he rushed the accused and tried to fight her off by the broken lantern thing because he's not gone over by the broken lantern. If he feels the water, if he's standing in the water maybe, or step backwards maybe instead, and therefore puts foot in the water, that leaves his positioning completely in the wrong place, right? So that one was a, a lot easier. We're still trying to work these out. And these are a lot more trickier than normal cross-examining testimony, aren't they? You expect that, considering we got somewhat used to it. So, I'd say to that, because... Oh, it's the sound of water. Not the sensation of water. Either way, it's gonna be this. Based on just, you know, what's going on around us. Objection! That's something new. Hold it. How do we know the purification rite was performed exactly as it was supposed to be? That's easy. The customs governing the right are very clear, and Abbot Inmi would have adhered to them. Well, that's strange. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain just what is so strange? Yes, I would ask you to consider the sound of the victim's footsteps. The sound of bells changes to the sound of water at one point. What's this? It's simple. The victim must have stepped in some water. Ah, as I postulated. Oh. Yes. And the only source of water in the inner sanctum is the spring. And therein lies the contradiction. What contradiction? I believe the right started out as it should have. The victim stood with his back to the spring and the accused stood right in front of him. But we now know the victim then moved into the spring, if we're counting he moved forward and not backwards from an onrushing foe. But then footsteps. But then I doubt footsteps anyway. Mm. The wind seems to be something important to me as well at this point. The wind. But we now know that the victim then moved into the spring. <coughs> but Hulk Hunker, that is absurd. This means the accused location differs from what a benevolence's insight indicates. Ah! Poor Rafer. Except, wait, no. L then, why do you propose the accused stood once she donned Lady Kira's robes? Based on the sound of the victim's footsteps, I believe Maya was standing here. I mean... Technically, if he was going forward, then it would make him in the spring. So, let's present there, then, I guess. Would it be? Hmm. That's the only postulation right now. That's the only way of thinking. So that would move forward what right we were at, right? But then what's going on over here? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. So basically, maybe it was later on in the ceremony is what we're saying, right? Take that! Until this moment, we've all just assumed that Abbot Inmi and Miss Faye were standing where they were supposed to be. As shown in this rights guide. In short, the victim should have been standing with his back to the spring and the accused in front. However, if that is how they were really standing, he couldn't have stepped into the spring as he approached her. The problem is, the victim did step into the spring. This can only mean that Miss Faye had actually been standing in the water. But, but if this is true, then their positions would have been completely reversed. All right, we've updated the chart again. What is going on here, Miss Faye? 
Were you really standing in the spring? I I'm sorry, but I barely remember anything about the rite. Handy. The high priest would never make such an obvious blunder during a rite. What on earth? Is that even possible? Is it? Be that as it may, this does not overturn my insights. It doesn't? Let's just say the accused was standing in the spring. So what? So what? This completely reverses their positions as what? But their positions differed from what is customary is rather curious. However, what does that change? It certainly does not erase the accused's brutal crime. I guess you have a point there. You lawyers are an absurd breed. Never thinking ahead, you cling to the first insignificant contradiction you can muster. Ugh. Sounds like Princess Rafer has a pretty good grasp on what lawyers are all about. Oh, Maya. Where would I be without your brutally frank commentary right now? Is this contradiction really meaningless? But something really doesn't feel right. Did I take a wrong turn somewhere? Hmm. I will now amend my insight to account for this new truth. So what's been changed? The same statement again. He rushed the accused and tried to fight her off by the poolside lantern. Don't know about that. Everything else is the same. Now the contradiction is no more. But the truth of the matter still stands, no matter how stubbornly you deny it. What do you have to say for yourself now, Mr. Wright? Ah. Uh. Nick! Your Majesty, this lawyer may have raised a trivial objection. But the benevolence's insights have no further inadequacies of any kind. Yes, that would seem. Wait a second, but there is another contradiction. Still you flounder about, wretched beast. Though you rack that putrid brain of yours, nothing worthwhile will come of it. M Maya, please tell me you remember something that might help us out here. Sorry, I really don't remember a thing. But now the place I was standing in has changed, who knows? That alone may cause a new discrepancy with Princess Rafer's insights. That's right, we now know that Maya was standing in the spring. A major change like that could very well produce a contradiction. I haven't explained the broken lantern yet now. I should take another look at the inner sanctum diagram in the court record, should I? Let's take his hint. So this is checking the, the diagram. I mean, that's just exactly as we know it. So, yeah. The Broken Lantern is far away from where any fighting would have taken place. If that was the case. So what's going on here? I mean, basically the only things we have of interest here are the springs, the lanterns, the curtains, and the Broken Lantern. Hmm. Take me into another bit so I can see what I can fight you with. And confirm where Maya and Abbot Inmi were standing. And then focus on finding any discrepancies between their positions and the insights. Okay, I mean, we may as well not view the first bit of anything here. So, you reckon it's probably the third statement again, based on things going on, and things always changing? He rests the accused and tried to fight her off by the Springside Lantern. What screws us for the Springside Lantern? Okay, that's showing the lantern. Okay, let's go back a whole thing. If we're looking at that as a statement involving the lantern specifically, it has to be involving the wind. I don't know if I can say this or not, but... I mean, wouldn't the wind have been blocked by the curtain? Does that make things weird in itself? I don't know. But it's got to be this bit. Because that's the lantern. That's the springside lantern. 
we know technically wasn't anywhere near it, but you know, we can see it over there. I mean, is this what we're going for? Just the lantern itself? Can I do that? Oh, I can. Sight or sound? Is the wind important? I feel like the wind should be important somewhere in this. But should I go with a lantern, considering it wasn't really by the Springside Lantern at all? It was further away from, he saw the lantern, it was in front of him. I don't know. Well, let's go for it, and if I get a penalty, I get a penalty. Isn't that the way it works? This is us essentially trying out a completely new mechanic, so let's keep digging. Your yeah, benevolence, I found a new contradiction. You? You did? Hmm. No doubt it is but another of your vile attempts to slander my insights. Nope. Take a good look at what the victim saw. It just might change your mind. The lantern flame behind the accused was flickering. There is nothing unusual about that, especially as the wind had stirred. Nope. That's where you're wrong. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! What? If the accused had been standing in the spring... I know exactly where this is going now and I couldn't figure it out myself. And what you see here should be one of the lanterns flanking the statue. I failed to see your point. My point is, something is wrong here. The two lanterns flanking the statue are both outfitted with glass wind guards. God, I didn't get that at the time. I just knew that it's obviously going to be the lantern, but still, why? I didn't get the why again. So neither lantern's flame should have been flickering in the wind in the first place. <laughs> she seems pretty tickled, Nick. I don't remember saying anything funny. I felt to see what you wished to prove here, but... Very well. I shall refine the vision and reveal the truth for all to see. Hey, lady, if you're going to bring these up in a court of law, can you actually refine them beforehand, please? And then you, we go from there, right? When, uh, when it's the actual vision? Oh, blessed Mitama, I beseech you, fix your sight upon the lantern there. I know it's probably not as precise as that in the first place, but still. Maybe she needs to train for years. Huh. That land doesn't have a wind guard on it. And rightly so. For the wind guard was removed to reveal the sacred flame within for the rite of fire. Therefore, there is nothing odd about the flame flickering. S say what? But, but when we searched the crime scene, those lands had the wind guards on. That's because the police put them back on. They're supposed to stay lit after all. Sacred flames are burned uninterrupted for a hundred of years, Defense. We could not risk them being extinguished, even during an investigation. That would never fly back home. Well, Bob's head, are you done quibbling? If so, then it is time to bow down before this testimony of the Mitama. Ah! Nick! Don't worry, Maya. I'm just getting started. Alright, let's go over everything we know so far. Maya was wearing Lady Kirilla's robes and standing in the spring. The High Priest is thought to have been moving toward her, so I should look for sensations that stand in contradiction to this arrangement. I won't give up. I'm going to find a contradiction that will undermine the accusation against Maya. Which way does the wind blow in this place? So what's our... F no, nothing's changed. Oh, oh. That's completely changed! Okay, what are we doing to statement here? It's obviously going to be this, right? But what am I going for the statement now? Rush up with the Springside Lantern. Ah, definitely that. Because that is not the Springside Lantern. That is the Broken Lantern by the look of it. And that was very much nowhere near the Springside. So, easy does it. 
Objection! That would mean he wouldn't be moving forward. He did step back. What could this possibly mean? Atlantic clearly contradicts the insight. But this contradiction will overturn the entire case I've been building. Are you right, Mr. Wright? One minute you shout out and the next you fall silent. Perhaps it is like the bellow of one who is barreling down a hill with no way of stopping. Is that not right, Prosecutor Sadmadi? Do you two not get on? Don't get cold feet now, Phoenix. Even if this overturns the entire case you built so far. The only way is to keep moving forward. Because that's where we'll find the truth. Sorry, but I'm not barreling down a hill. In fact, I'm in full control of everything with the indisputable contradiction I found. Is that so? The lantern behind the accused clearly, no, blatantly contradicts your insight. Does it now? One of the lanterns on the entrance side of the inner sanctum was broken. And if you watch what Abbott Inmi saw in his final moments, you will notice that the lantern behind the praying form of Miss Fate is broken. So we switch around everyone once again. The lantern behind Lady Kira, however, is still intact. In short, we are seeing two different lanterns in this seance vision. In fact, someone turned around while he held up a certain scroll. How could this be? And even if it were so, how would that contradict my insights? He didn't step back, he did move back though. Back is the answer. Let me start by saying the claim I'm about to raise will overturn the case I've built thus far. Will the defense please explain himself? Based on the broken lantern, we can tell May and Abbott Inmi's positions, or the lantern's positions, was well, obviously their positions. Maya's position indeed. Where well, the accused and the victim were standing. But did you not just finish asserting that the accused was standing somewhere else? I did, and I built my argument on that faulty premise. But thankfully, it has led us here. To the actual spot where Maya Faye was standing. I must say, the defense keeps changing his assertions in such a capricious manner. His credibility may come into question. I'm willing to take that risk, you magistrate, because I believe this will be the last time. I'd like to start by pointing out the actual spot where the accused was standing. Very well. Show us where you now believe the accused was actually standing. Based on the location of the broken lantern, where was Maya really standing? Well, it would be still this side of... Trust in me. So, about here-ish. Would it be? Or there? Yeah? Wouldn't you say? That's where I think she was originally standing in our original postulated thing. I wasn't thinking straight before, but now it's all falling into place. We know the victim has stepped into the spring. That means Maya Fey had to have been standing in the water as he approached. However, his memory, which has only now become clear, reveals that Miss Fey was standing by the side of the broken lantern. In other words... She was standing where she was supposed to be according to custom. Does that not bring us back to the very beginning? Nope. This is where things take a different turn, and I mean that literally. The victim had to have been moving toward the spring. That means that while he was moving, he had his back turned toward the accused. What's this? Do you mean to say the victim turned around during the right? But such an image appears nowhere in the seance vision. Actually, it does appear. It's just that no one noticed until now. No one noticed? How could no one have noticed something so big? There was a moment when the scripture the victim was holding was all we could see. Thanks to that, none of us could tell that he was in fact turning around in that moment. Ah! Of course you would. 
If it is as the defense asserts, then her benevolence's insight no longer makes sense. How do you intend to explain that? Well, we do wish to know that indeed, but as the episode ramps up, have we managed to break down the divination seance? We end for yet another episode. So join me next time for more Phoenix Wright's Spirit of Justice. We will continue this train of thought and the trial. Have we managed to defeat Rifer once again? We'll find out next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>